That was pretty intense. Trap House 3 by Gucci Mane, DJ Rustic, or Zedit. 20 hertz. I think that song's just 20. I don't think it's like got a low or a high. I think it's just 20, but that was pretty nasty. I'm going to have to add that in the old demo folder. You know Good what I mean? Good morning, everybody. Well, it's been storming like crazy, like all night, most of the morning. And now the sun's out, which is awesome i guess so i guess today we're gonna go ahead and just do a uh we're gonna cover three types of subwoofers and you know kind of help you figure out what you want to buy if you're putting together a, a nice little demo system or whatever um because you do have options i'm gonna explain the best of my ability uh, you know, I'm not a scientist or whatever, but I'll try. I try, you know. Anyway, uh, so I guess we're going to start at the beginning here. Neodymium versus ferrite. I've done a video on this, and, you know, a ferrite subwoofer has way more motor force, uh, generally. And they are great for burps. <clears throat> I mean, I know like loud grandpa picked up over a DB just swapping the fair, like the, the compact Neos, which them little subs are amazing for burps. Uh, I don't know how good they are for demo, but I know for burps, they are just badass. Uh, but the downfall of neodymium is once it gets hot, it loses goss, which means, you know, the magnetism, we're going to call that a word today. The magnetism drops. Uh, and I saw a video that wasn't subwoofer related at all, where a guy had one of them big fishing neodymium magnets. Like, you know, you see the videos, the guy's throwing it off a bridge and pulling the rope, finding all kind of goodies. Anyway, he had a magnet like that, and he could pick up a 45 pound plate with it, like easily. And uh, he just took a regular old heat gun and heated it up. And after a couple minutes of that heat gun, it wouldn't even pick up 10 pounds. It was kind of lifting five a little bit and then dropping it, you know. So he let it cool down and it picked up to 45 again. Now that was unrelated to uh, subwoofers, but it just shows you how neodymium works as a whole. So in a demo build, me personally, I wouldn't run neo for that fact. Because, you know, some of these shows you go to, you got a line outside the door and it's like demo after demo after demo and you're just going to start driving yourself into clipping. <laughs> but ferrite, that's kind of where ferrite prevails at on this scenario. Uh, ferrite can get hot and it'll keep going until the coil goes. And once you let this magic smoke out, you can't put it back, but... You know, as long as you know what you're doing with the old ferrite, you can run them things pretty hot. So that's kind of, you know, the differences between the old ferrite and the old denium. Then I've kind of discussed this before, three inch coil for versus four inch coil. Now there's a lot of, a lot of things you could talk about on this. Uh, like for instance, you know, they say a four inch coil will handle more power. But I call cap on that. And the reason being, you can take a four inch coil that is four layer round wound. And you can take a three inch coil that's eight layer flat wound. And that three inch coil, eight layer flat wound will handle more power pretty much all day. <clears throat> but, you know, efficiency comes into play on a lot of this too. Uh, which the four inch coil in that situation would probably be more efficient. Uh you know, it's all a toss up. It depends on what kind of coil you get and so on and so forth. I personally love three inch coils. I have put a ton of power to three inch coils and they always just come out slapping. Uh, to me, they seem way more efficient. 
And for me, efficiency is key. You know, how far can you get that subwoofer moving on as little power as possible and then throw big power at it? <laughs> so I, I have always just been a fan of a three inch coil. Uh, you know, I tested the Leviathans in here and they were uh, two and a two and three quarter inch coil. And I mean, they took some power, not not nearly as good as these Genesis, which are a three inch coil. But I mean, they took some power and to me, they just wasn't doing what I wanted them to do. Now, at the same time, I tried four inch coils before and it just seemed like on the power that I had, they wasn't getting as loud as the three inch coil. So that was my only like experience playing with a four inch coil and I didn't care for it. But the last subject we're gonna talk about uh, on the old subwoofer chain here is copper coil versus aluminum coil. Now, I think Jacob Fuller, I seen him reply on a thread asking about this. I think he summed it up really well. Which one is best? It all depends on the subwoofer that is being built. Typically, a copper coil will yield a lower FS and uh, a higher motor force, typically. But, you know, if you designed a motor to work with that aluminum coil, then, I mean, you could have a badass subwoofer. If you've got a motor designed to work with the copper coil, you could have a badass subwoofer. Me, personally, I've used both, and I've liked both. I have had no problem with either one. You're going to run into a situation where the aluminum will probably cool quicker than the copper just because that's one of the advantages of aluminum is they cool quicker um i think a lot of coils are made with uh well some are made with the former which is the center of the coil being aluminum and wrapped in copper wire some are all copper some are aluminum former and they are wrapped with copper clad aluminum wire so it, it, it all depends, man. It's a big toss up there. You know, the, the main advantages of this all together is aluminum cools faster and a copper coil will yield more motor force. I like motor force, but I mean, I've never really seen a whole lot of big difference with the, uh, with the aluminum or copper voice coil. Now, these have uh, a copper voice coil and the Genesis are designed and made to play low. They play low really well. I do know that a copper voice coil is heavier than aluminum. I do know that the, the heavier, the soft parts on a subwoofer is gonna yield a lower FS. Um, and that, like I said, the copper kind of give you a little more motor force, so but I ain't going to say copper is better because it does definitely come down to the design of the subwoofer. There are subwoofers out there made with aluminum coils that just get nasty. So anyway, that's my take on these three different types of subwoofers. Uh, if I was building a vehicle to burp, that bad boy would have compact Neos in it all day. I'm afraid to try a Neodymium subwoofer in one of my builds for what I do now, which is, you know, I love to demo. I just don't think I would get along with it. And a good, a good like example of this would be uh, JP's Neo Hope. You know, he had them nightshades back there neodymium and he had fans on the motors like inside of his enclosure he had fans on the motors because what happens is that neodymium gets hot it loses gas or magnetism and that's just gonna put heat in the voice coil and you're gonna need recones <clears throat> this is gonna kill the subwoofer kill the coil so he had them fans back there for that reason to try to keep them motors cool. Uh, they even had little fins they made to put on the motors, which acted like 
the fins on the heat sink of an amplifier to help pull, you know, the uh, heat out. So when the fans were on, it would cool better. Me personally, you know, I, like I said, for a demo build, because when I go to shows, I love to demo. I don't want to have to worry about my subwoofers dying because they got hot. Now, we're going we're gonna to back up here to the three inch, four inch voice coil. You know, I told you, I'm a, I, I like the three inch coils. Uh, a lot of people do great. I mean, I've seen some subwoofers that have the four inch coil and they are nasty. Me personally, I like the three. And here's something a lot of people miss out on when they're, they're choosing subwoofer. Uh, it's just an industry standard right now to have a 10 inch spider. 10 inch spider on most of your big boy subwoofers. Uh, what happens when you have a 10 inch spider and a three inch coil, well, you know, you got three across, you got 10 across, so you know, that leaves you three and a half inches on each side of the coil all the way around that spider for spider material. That's going to give you a higher X max, which means the, the subwoofer can travel further. X mechanical is going to be higher, which X mechanical is the limit that a subwoofer can travel. X max is just the normal travel. X mechanical is like the limit that it can go. You're going to get a higher X mechanical with a three inch coil and that's because you still have a 10 inch spider with a four inch coil and now instead of having three and a half on each side all the way around of spider material you have dropped down to three on each side you know because three three that's six four in the middle for the coil that's ten so you have lost basically an inch overall which is a half inch all the way around and believe it, dude, that half inch is going to add up on travel of soft parts. A lot of people overlook this. A lot of people just look at subs and they're like, I want the highest X max that I can get. It does help for windy demos, but <clears throat> it isn't the end all. I mean, I've been in a lot of builds with four inch coils that get nasty windy. Me, I just prefer the three. And like I said, I was just giving you examples of what I think are benefits for the three. Now, at the end of the day, you know, if you're talking uh, four inch versus three inch, say both are flat wound four layer and flat wound would be the wire wrapped around. It wouldn't be your typical round wire. It would be like flatter, wider, you know, a little bit bigger, better wire on the coil. <clears throat> so if you, both of them are using four layer flat wound. At the end of the day, that four inch coil is going to handle more power. But there are situations where a bigger coil doesn't mean better. Uh, you know, I already told you like a four inch round wound uh, with four layers wouldn't handle as much power as a three inch flat wound eight layer coil. But now you can compare apples to apples and say you have a subwoofer with a two and a half inch coil, four layer round wound versus a subwoofer with a three inch coil four layer round wound and one would in theory handle more power but it has less motor force say the one with the two and a half inch coil had a bigger motor on it more motor force and you have one over here that's got the bigger coil smaller motor less motor force and there is a company making subs like this. I'm not going to mention no names. I'll tell you that the model number of the dog. And it's the EVL. And the, the little one is the DDX. The DDX is a better subwoofer all day. Because even though it's got a smaller voice coil. It is using the voice coil properly and more efficient. Because of the, the proper motor force. The EVL just doesn't have enough motor for a 3 inch coil. Especially when you get into the added weight, like the 15 and 18 versions of that. Uh, just, there's not enough motor force there. The motor's too small. Um, a lot of people love them subs. I mean, I've, I don't know. I mean, I'm just giving y'all examples here. Uh, in that situation, the DDX is like 
a way better sub, even though it's smaller coil. People are like, it can't handle as much power because it takes a ton of power to get an EVL to do anything because it's very inefficient because it has a smaller coil. I'm not hating on SCAR at all, guys. I'm just using, this is an example. If you learn how to read TS parameters on a subwoofer, you're going to be like, God, why did they make an EVL with a motor the size of a McDouble? Um, but anyway, if you want to learn how to calculate motor force yourselves, uh, it is very simple. You find the TS parameters on the subwoofer, which most websites give them. Half the time, they're inaccurate as hell. But it's, you can just take it as a baseline. Uh, you take, you go down the list and you find BL. You times BL times itself. So, you know, say BL is four. You would do four times four. That's just an example. Now, you go up and you find RE. So, you got four times four. Divide by the number that is RE. That is going to give you your motor force. Uh, you know, quick, simple, easy way to find motor force. So you can kind of start looking at these TS parameters and doing this calculation on your own. But anyway, guys, I'm getting way too long spread out in this video. I just wanted to touch on kind of some of the, the most common questions you get when people are shopping for subwoofers and things that people really want to know. So I, I kind of went out and discussed the main three that I see pop up all the time. But I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, thank you all for watching my channel. You know, go up, up here somewhere and subscribe. And then go down here and leave a comment. Even if you don't like what I, I, something I said in this video. You know, if you're a SCAR guy and you love them EVLs, then tell me about it in the comments. Hell, I need traffic to this page, guys. Anyway, I hope you all have a great day. Peace out, guys, and base on.